everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Time of Legends Joan of Arc, Solomon Kane, Reichbusters, Enchanters, Steam Watchers, or Hell the Last Saga. But let's get to everything else. Haha, <laughs> fooled you! Actually, I got this little piece of news after I was about 90% done editing this video, and I had to go back and record this little snippet and include it in the video. We got word from Quartermaster Logistics that they are receiving some communications from our backers that are borderline harassment. Now, we were very clear that shipments to our North American hub would be arriving at two different times. One container was sent early when we were able to find room for it on a ship, while the other two containers would be coming together at a later date. And you can reference the previous updates we've made for their arrival times. With that being said, if you have not yet received an address verification email from QML, it means your pledge will be handled when the product in the remaining containers reaches their warehouse. Now, we realize that this has been a long time coming, but that's really not an excuse for this kind of behavior. So please be patient for just a bit longer, and as soon as those last two containers arrive, I know QML will get you your product as quickly as possible. Hello, Torchbearers. This week, we want to continue our Hero Spotlight series with a hero that's here to collect the bounty, the sinister and precise bounty hunter. The Bounty Hunter is a very methodical warrior who has mastered the art of hunting and bringing down all kinds of quarry. Able to adapt to any group with a set of skills that can be used from almost any position and for any circumstance, the Bounty Hunter also has a solid life pool, movement speed, and dodge. Many of those skills can exploit any weaknesses and turn the table in the favor of the heroes. With Mark of Death, a target is marked and debuffed, making it easier to hit and more susceptible to critical hits. Come Hither also marks a target and at the same time pulls it towards the Bounty Hunter, the perfect skill to use for those pesky enemies that like to fight from a distance. With Uppercut, the Bounty Hunter pushes its target away and stuns them. Additionally, it can stun an enemy with flashbang, an attack that also disorients the target. Lastly, by throwing caltrips, the bounty hunter can cause bleed and debuff on an enemy simultaneously for an increased chance to finish it off with a critical hit. And of course, there are also two skills perfect for finishing the job. Collect Bounty is a high damage skill that does extra damage to marked targets and human type enemies. Finish Him is another skill that does extra damage to targets that are stunned. And with that, we'll conclude another Hero Spotlight. Until next time, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, I wanted to give you a more detailed look at the new Round 2 Kickstarter that launches today, March 9th, 2021. First of all, there will be no less than four different pledge levels available, each of them engineered for a certain entry point for the game. There's the Fan Pledge, set for $1 or more, that's meant to cater to those who either simply want to purchase add-ons in the Pledge Manager, or to simply get the things that they didn't already have on pre-order with their FLGS. Then there's the Round 2 Pledge, set for $50 or more. This is the perfect pledge for returning backers who are looking for just the new stuff, including foil versions of the Champions and sleeves for all the new Champions cards. Next is the Super Fan Pledge, set for $65 or more. This is the basic entry level pledge for the core game, two expansions, the 3D statues, and the plastic tokens. It's a great place to begin your Super Fantasy Brawl experience. And finally, there's the Mega Fan Pledge, set at $160 or more. This is the quintessential pledge for Super Fantasy Brawl if you've never backed before. It includes the core box and all six expansions, the 3D statues, upgraded plastic tokens, 
foil champion cards, the neoprene kit, and sleeves for everything. If you haven't been able to purchase anything for Super Fantasy Brawl, but you already know you love it, this is the perfect pledge for you. We also have a lot planned for the retailers. If you're a retailer and you'd like to carry Super Fantasy Brawl in your store, we want to work with you. So please contact us at retail at mythicgames.net so we can get the ball rolling for you. And lastly, I just wanted to give you some mini bios for the nine new champions being released in round two. In the Radiant Authority expansion, we have King Alistair, Khalees, and Sir Tentaclot. King Alistair, the Scaled Tyrant, also known as Alistair the Blackhearted, was draconian in more than the nature of his rule. With strength and resilience beyond measure, King Alistair led a bloody coup of Kandamar almost two centuries ago. As they get older, draconians develop more dragon-like features. Well into his 300th year, Alistair was more powerful than ever, crushing his enemies in his iron grasp. However, a new threat arose from a most unexpected quarter, a threat that, if not stopped, could take from him everything he has gained. Khalees, Will of the Heavens, High Priestess of the Khmeran Nation, served the Skylord Aket with fervent zeal, seeing him as the savior of her people. Khalees was the first to detect the maligned influence of Sulka's sorcery and fought back against the Naga's vile powers with her own divine abilities. Blessed by the heavens, Khalees' radiant touch soothed and healed the wounds of her people. During the final days of Kamara, she was revered as a holy warrior, second only to the Sky Lord himself. An ambitious octopus aspiring for greatness, Sir Tentaclot managed to swiftly attain the rank of knighthood through his devotion to madness. This molluscoid knight, hailing from the submerged realm of Ethasa, has pledged his life to protect all things crazy in the name of the nearly forgotten god of madness. Having a natural affinity for adapting to all mental states, Tentaclot can easily let go of any rational thoughts and invoke a mental maelstrom to his hapless victims. Many fearsome warlords have succumbed to his power, and yet there are still more to come. Now, where was I? In the Mental Might expansion, we find Zinshin, Isabella, and Alchemy. Zinshin, the kinetic kitty, was once the most disruptive child of Swiss Song Abbey. After losing her father during the Lokai invasion, Zinshin and her mother joined the monastery as refugees. For many years, her internal anger at the world clouded Zinshin from finding her own truth that she holds a unique connection to Fabulosa and is able to manipulate and commune with the forces of the world beyond the measure of any mortal being. Finally able to embrace her inner peace, Zenshin became a powerful force for peace and balance in Tigera and fought to defend others with her exceptional gifts and abilities. Born into the house Dermont, Isabella the Fate Weaver's life was full of unexpected events. The day she was born, the fates visited her in her cradle and gave her the gift of foresight and prophetic vision. Fearing the extent of her wisdom, they cursed her so that her words were not to be believed by anyone. Sixteen years later, she foresaw a treacherous murder, but her words of caution were regarded with suspicion. Thus, she fled her home to avoid capture and found solace among the common folk. She foretold her brother Marius' doom and her father's death, but then again, her words fell to deaf ears. Sharing the same fate with her brother, she's offered to guide him along his journey, ensuring that both of them remain safe and sound. It all begins and ends with a wish. At least that's how Alchemy the Wishmaker's masters would describe their brief encounters with this mischievous djinn. As an entity composed solely of magic and born by the fusion of manipulation and destruction, the Wishmaker has managed to transcend both time and space, and more often than not, the Jinn has chosen its masters with only one thing in mind, willful slavery. Thus, it chose Princess Gawain, who begged for more power and destruction in the mastermind Sulka, who wished to 
perfect the art of manipulation. Yet both of them are unaware of the fact that their insatiable craving for more would indebt them further to the wishmaker. In the Hot Trick expansion, Nickit, Lily, and Jacques Lebeau wait to join the battle. When the warlord Corvash destroyed their home in Hillsglade, the three goblin siblings, Nickit, Nickit, and Nickit, fled their home, abandoning everyone to their fate. They found solace in the dark forest of Ravenholm, overseen by the circle of the depthless bog a sect of dark druids founded by the legendary arc druid Nevermore. Practicing the druidic arts closely, the trio of siblings realized that they weren't proficient enough in understanding it. Thus, they decided to improvise. Staying true to their goblin heritage and using their ingenuity, they decided to create a false agenda. Covered with a druidic mantle and wearing a skull mask, Nickit and Nickit, would carry their sister, Nickit, on their shoulders and would pose as a terrible druid, Nickit the Sly. Now many travelers fear the mysterious druid more than the rest of the circle members, for he is unpredictable, cunning, and resourceful. Lily is the legendary halfling thief of the party. Sneaky, cunning, and resourceful, this Inventive Rogue has created a vast network of informants and thieves to assist her party's needs. She knows how to conceal herself from danger and how to divert her quarry's attention should she need more time. She still reminisces in the good times she had with the company and how fond she had grown of her, the fighter of the party. And now that the brawl has been brought to her attention, she wants to take part in it. For now is the perfect moment to shine and gain all the fame she ever wanted, and possibly her friends will be persuaded to join in too, so Lily will have a chance to fight alongside her girlfriend again. Once a musketeer sworn to hunt down the pirate ship Grave Robber and bring its reign of terror to an end, Jacques Lebeau was always a man of indecision. An expert duelist and a charming debonair, Jacques sails across the seven seas for fame, riches, and the thrill of excitement. As the first mate atop the ship he once vowed to sink, Jacques lives for the joy of boarding other ships and of beating every duelist the kingdoms have to offer with panache. His quick wit and skill in the blade can only be matched by his eloquence and elegance, and as of now, no one has ever been able to ignore his irresistible nature. What will happen when he meets the one that catches his heart? Will he stay the same, or will he betray once more the cause he's fighting for? Well, we look forward to seeing you on the new Round 2 Kickstarter very, very soon. So, no. No, there won't be any more hijacking of the broadcast signal today. That rebel scum thinks he can subvert me and go behind my back? <laughs> well, he's got another thing coming. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English. And at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. Now, keep in mind that with our Kickstarter going, that schedule may change, but Leo is going to be doing a live tomorrow, so stay open for it. It might be different than the normal schedule. So tune in if you have any questions, or if you just want to see what he might spoil, he is going to be focusing more on Super Fantasy Brawl, though, so be ready for that. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>